interdependence among plants and animals. Now, let us see how plants and animals depend on each other for their survival. Considering food, yes, plants are the main producers of food. They, the energy stored in the form of starch in the plants is transferred to the animals when they eat plants. Animals use this energy to work and grow and store a part of this energy in their bodies. Now take a look at the diagram. When the carnivores or omnivores eat these animals, the energy again passes into the body of the carnivores or omnivores in the form of food. Okay children, can you tell me what are carnivores or omnivores animals? Yes, carnivores animals are those animals which mostly survive on the herbivores animals. While the omnivores are those animals which depend on plant as well as on the other animals for their food. This forms a kind of chain where energy flows from sun to the plants and then to the animals in the form of food. Such a chain is called as food chain. Now, let's take a look how do the plants and animals depend on each other on the basis of exchange of gases. Please take a look at the diagram. Plants use carbon dioxide to prepare food. In this process, they release oxygen. Animals use this oxygen to breathe. Animals breathe out carbon dioxide, which is used by plants. Hence, there is a continuous exchange of gases that takes place in nature. Now, let us learn about some amazingly different organisms. Let us begin with the cactus. Take a look at the diagram, please. As we can see, a cactus does not have leaves. It has leaves that are reduced to spines. This serves to protect the loss of water. Cactus has a stem which is fleshy and it helps it to make its food and store water in it. The next different organism can be considered to be as Venus flytrap. Please take a look at the picture. It is both a producer and a carnivore. It gets energy from the sun and transforms it into food that is with the process of photosynthesis. It also has a very unique feeding habit as 
it is dependent on insects for nutrients it catches its prey mainly insects and traps them in its leaves such plants are known as insectivorous plants the other examples of insectivorous plants are sundew and pitcher plant now let us learn about some non green plants as we can see in the pictures these plants do not have chlorophyll that means they cannot prepare their own food hence they cannot photosynthesize these plants grow on dead and decaying plants and animals and absorb food from them for example coral root and indian pipe are known as non green plants some plants like croton have purple or red leaves they contain chlorophyll which is hidden behind their dark color this plant can make its own food now let us learn about parasitic plants some plants depend on other plants partially or completely for their nutrition we can see this in the pictures given below such plants are called as parasitic plants they usually damage the plant on which they grow for example cascuta and mistletoe saprophytic plants the plants that obtain nutrition from dead and decaying plants and animals are called as saprophytic plants and this is all about the amazingly different organisms that we find in the nature